I'm a liar, he's a liar, she's a liar, we's a liar. Wouldn't you like to be a liar too? We're all liars. This thing was a lie, that thing was a lie. But let, let, let's see how long they can go without lying. But in truth, here's the thing, okay? Not every false statement is a lie. Really. See, a lie is when you say something that you know is false. When you say something that is false and you legitimately think it's true, then you're not lying. You're just wrong. And probably stupid. Now, if I were to tell you that Donald Trump is wrong as often as he is lying, you would probably not to protest too much. You may even realize that it's still a little over the top to call a liar if you really take a step back and you look at it. He says these crazy things, is he lying? I, I think that it's actually reasonable to just say that he's an idiot. And then he runs off his mouth about things that he doesn't, he doesn't, know, he doesn't know what the hell he's saying. Okay? What less people will agree about, and which I claim is actually equally valid, okay, here's the shocker, is the claim that Clinton is wrong as often as she is lying as well. And I do claim that most people that are really actually paying close enough attention realize this. Even if they're unwilling or even afraid to admit it, you know. You're going to um, get some pushback if you try to suggest that Clinton's really just as stupid as Trump. You're, you're going to get some pushback on that. But I, I think, like I say, if you're really paying close enough attention, I, th I think that um, what comes out is that they're really two sides of the same coin. So we're actually in a situation that's much more dangerous than I think is like being acknowledged. It's really less that the election is between two pathological liars. You know, it's not... Neither one of these people are diabolical geniuses. It's more that the election is between two people who often stand up and speak about things that they have very little real understanding of. And so the actual dangerous, you know, scary truth is that they're both clueless idiots. To call them liars, and this applies to both of them, is to give them too much credit. He wings it and constantly makes a fool of himself. She memorizes lines that she often doesn't fully understand and ends up weaving confusing webs of apparent contradictions. So you can take the TBP, for example. It's just one thing. Clinton was told it was a free trade agreement. She was given prepared remarks by the State Department. She did her job, which was delivered. So when she called the TPP the gold standard, the actual truth was that she didn't really know what the hell she was saying. She may or may not have practiced beforehand, but I mean, when you're a secretary, you're busy. You're being moved from A to B all the time. Do you really have time to go over your lines? Or do you just show up and the teleprompter's there and you just read on the screen? Isn't that what the job actually is, guys? We say she's secretary. she was Secretary of State for four years, and it was such great experience. Such great experience doing what? Traveling the world and reading, reading uh, notes off of a screen? Basically what I'm doing right now, except I'm not traveling the world, and I actually write the notes. Excuse me. She was no doubt briefed about its contents, but she almost certainly hadn't read it. How could she have? It hadn't been written yet. Think about how crazy this is. Heaps absurd amounts of praise on an agreement that hasn't been written. What did she mean? The the you know the abstract concept of the TPP is the gold standard. 
In truth, that's probably what existed in her mind. It was an abstract, it was, it was an ideal of it, right? There's like the ideal form of the TPP, and then the TPP that exists in reality is the imperfect representation of it. And it was really the ideal of it in her mind, which may have actually been a free trade agreement. Who knows? Did they tell her what it was really about? Did they make shit up? But that term gold standard, I don't know who wrote it. But I think that it's, it's a pretty high, you know, probability that whoever the person that did write it, that wrote it was, that person was not Hillary Clinton. And so what was she doing when, when, when she, she was just reading lines off of a screen? Lines that she didn't write, that she probably had not read beforehand, and that she probably had almost no real understanding of as she was saying them. I'm the messenger, don't shoot me, I'm just telling you, you know? It's how it is. It's what the job is. All the actual work is done by the bureaucracy, which doesn't really even tend to sh t tend to switch over uh, between elections, right? All the people that work at the State Department, if the Republicans win, are the people at the State Department, you know, it's the figureheads that change. That's democracy, because we get to pick our spokespeople. So the accusations come down. She's a liar. She said it was the gold standard, and now she opposes it. One way or the other, she's lying. It's less that I'm claiming it's unfair, and more than I'm claiming it's just wrong. It's just not accurate to accuse her of dishonesty. She didn't know what the hell she was saying. She was just doing her job, which was to read her prepared remarks. I'm not claiming that her claimed opposition to the TPP is genuine. For all I know, she still doesn't know what it is. When exactly do you think it is that she had time to sit down and read it? I think it's clear the whole thing is political, okay? But when it comes down to it, if she ends up signing it under pressure from the Pentagon because it's a... Uh, this is not about global trade, it's about geopolitics, right? Then, I mean, if that happens, then what's happening again? The answer is that she's doing her job in implementing legislation pushed down through the bureaucracy. And she'll just show up, you know, in the State of the Union and read our lines kind of thing. See, and here's the sneaky trick. She can oppose it as an individual, maintain consistency, and yet still sign it into law, because this is what, you know, the, the, the bureaucrats want. You know, done under pressure from, from lobbyists, right? <coughs> and she can do all that without ever being dishonest and without ever actually reading it. Like I said, it's a big document. I haven't read it. Have you read it? I could come up with an example for Trump, but I don't think I need to. Right? We all agree that Trump talks about things that he doesn't understand. That's, that's like, just known. What's different here is that I'm claiming, you know, my, the novel part of my argument here has to do with Clinton. So don't, don't, mi don't misinterpret this as I'm picking on Clinton. It's just... Clinton needed a, you know, a walkthrough where Trump is its, its apparent, right? What I'm trying to get across is that the accusations of dishonesty are obscuring the more difficult truth. That the reason these people trip over so many of their words is not because they're studious, you know, diabolical liars. But because they both have the same habit of standing up in public and talking about things that they just don't really understand. When you say things that you don't understand, and then somebody finds a contradiction, 
you know, two statements and you didn't really understand what you were saying either time, you're not lying. You're just clueless. Yes, we should, Kent. So it's a little after one in the morning. Um, I was up about one o'clock this afternoon. And before um, I get back to reciting, um, I'm gonna get a little bit of a talking because I don't know how many. I don't know how much I've got on this. Um, I pulled it out before it was done. I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess it was pretty close to being done. Today I ran out of batteries. Um, and it was kind of a problem um, because I was right in the middle of reciting. Um, I couldn't really record anything. Um, the computer was stuck. I, I, I ended up kind of um, just kind of stuck here. Um, and I really haven't done anything at all today. Um, I mean, I, I did some reciting. And I put some things in order. Um, but besides that, there's not a lot to really um, draw attention to, unfortunately. Um, and I don't, at this point, really have anything else to say other than to kind of um, check in at this kind of narrative moment. Um, I was hoping to get a little more cleaning done today. Um, I could still very well, depending on how long I stay up for. I guess it's about one. Um, if I'm still awake, it's around seven o'clock or so, it, it could happen. Um, but right now I need to uh, finish my reciting and then go from there. Okay, so it's 4 a.m. and I'm caught up on the reciting. I'm still super low on the batteries. In fact, this is going to die any second. But um, I'm going to need to catch up on the ultra reality next. It is actually Thursday morning. So, like, I should be moving on to the next one. Um, let's try to get as much as I can before I fall asleep.